afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to McNichols Arena for the 34th annual NBA All-Star Game. Now let's meet the East All-Stars. At forward from the New York Knicks, making his second All-Star appearance, number 30, Bernard King. At guard from the New Jersey Nets, making his fourth All-Star appearance, number 10, Otis Birdsong. Forward center from the Washington Bullets, appearing in his very first All-Star game, number 43, Jeff Ruland. At forward from the Detroit Pistons, making his second All-Star appearance, number 7, Kelly Tripuka. At center also from the Detroit Pistons, the NBA's second leading rebounder, who's replacing the top vote-getter in this year's balloting, Moses Malone of Philadelphia, who's injured, number 40, Bill Lane Beer. Guard from the world champion Philadelphia 76ers, making his second All Star appearance, number 22, Andrew Tony. A forward center from the Boston Celtics, making his first All Star appearance, number 32, Kevin McHale. And now the starters for the East All Stars at guard for the Milwaukee Bucks, appearing in his third consecutive All Star game, number four, Sidney Moncrief. The other guard from the Detroit Pistons, also appearing in his third consecutive game, his first start, number 11, Isaiah Thomas. At center from the Boston Celtics, appearing in his fourth consecutive All-Star game, number double zero, Robert Parrish. At forward from the Boston Celtics, the MVP of the 1982 All-Star game, number 33, Larry Bird. the other forward from the world champion Philadelphia 76ers, the MVP of last year's All-Star Game, number six, the doctor, Julius Irving. The head coach of the East from the Boston Celtics, Casey Jones. Assistant coaches, Chris Ford and Jimmy Rogers from Boston, and the trainer from Indiana, David Craig. And now let's meet the West All-Stars. At forward from the Dallas Mavericks. Appearing in his first All-Star game, number 24, Mark Aguirre. At guard, from the Portland Trail Blazers, appearing in his second consecutive game, number 5, Jim Paxson. Also at guard from the Phoenix Suns, making his fifth All-Star appearance, number 6, Walter Davis. At guard from the Utah Jazz, appearing in his first All-Star game, number 14, Ricky Green. At center from the Seattle Supersonics, this is his sixth consecutive All-Star game, number 43, Jack Sigma. The only rookie in this year's All-Star game at center from the Houston Rockets, number 50, Ralph Sampson. Forward from the Denver Nuggets, the NBA's third leading scorer, number 55, Kiki Vandaway. And now the starters for the West, the guard from the San Antonio Spurs, making his eighth consecutive All-Star appearance, number 44, the Iceman, George Gervin. the other guard from the Los Angeles Lakers, the NBA's assist leader, the Magic Man, number 32, Irvin Magic Johnson. At center from the Los Angeles Lakers, appearing in his 13th All-Star game, which ties the NBA record, number 33, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. At forward from the Utah Jazz, the NBA's leading scorer, number four, Adrian Dantley. at the other forward from the Denver Nuggets, making his third consecutive All-Star appearance, number two, Alex English. The head coach of the West from the Utah Jazz is Frank Layton. His assistant coach is also from Utah, Phil Johnson and Scott Layton, and the trainer from the Denver Nuggets, the chopper, Bob Travellini. The honorary captains for the East, five-time All-Star, Wes Unseld. for the West, the man who was voted the greatest basketball player of the first half century, 
George Mikan. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks the end of an era for the NBA. Larry O'Brien is retiring as commissioner after eight and a half years of service, during which the NBA has expanded to 23 teams and reached landmark collective bargaining and anti-drug agreements with the players. From now on, the NBA's World Championship Trophy will be the Larry O'Brien Trophy, a fitting tribute to an outstanding leader. So now let's give him a warm send-off to Larry O'Brien. And now, with our national anthem, let's join Motown recording artist, The Temptations. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still The 1984 NBA All-Star Game is sponsored by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Ford on your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Speed Stick Deodorant, the wide stick gives you the edge. Speed Stick Deodorant by Menon. Hi everyone, I'm Dick Stockton with Tom Heinsohn here, all set for the tip-off. Tommy, how do you look? What's the All-Star game mean to you? This is a player's game. It's like a, a jazz group being let loose from Lawrence Welk's orchestra, to tell you the truth. They're out here to jam today and play their own kind of music. And that's what both coaches want to do. Frank Layden says we want to run the floor, dunk the ball, do exciting things. And Casey Jones says, I want a street game. That's what he wants. So, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the West in the white shirts. Number 33 jumps against Robert Parrish. Control by the West. And a turnover off the top. Isaiah Thomas will be handling the ball when he's in there. It is still going to be East ball. Keep in mind, the East has won four consecutive games, and they can win an unprecedented fifth straight All-Star game today. Thomas feeding inside. Loose ball and a foul. They want to run. There's no question both ball clubs will push it at each other, and they've got the best possible players in the NBA to do that. Isaiah Thomas and Magic Johnson, the middlemen, Par Supreme on the fast break. George Gervin committed the foul, and one of the outstanding players at both ends of the court, Sidney Moncrief, who leads the Milwaukee Bucks in just about every category, including scoring over 22 a game, including a rebound at 6'4 guard. He was the defensive player of the year last year, and Sidney Moncrief is the heart and soul of that Milwaukee team. Sure is, and he adds so much by way of being a competitor. He does it all for the Bucks. All right, Magic Johnson. He was out for 13 games with a broken finger. 
Lakers are glad to have him back, and we're glad to have him in the All-Star game. Kareem is outside now, working against the Doc, who's looking for a steal, but he got caught for a foul instead. What makes this game so great, Dick, is the fact that when they come in here, there's not too many systems. They are left to their own individual uh, inventions, and they love to play in this game, and you'll see some great matchups. And we're going to talk about the individual players. No basket. The ball was interfered with on top of the cylinder, so there'll be no basket, and so Isaiah Thomas pushes it up for the East All-Star. And, do and does he push it up, Dick? Moncrief loses it out of bounds. Isaiah Thomas was the youngest player ever to play in an All-Star game at age 23 years ago. This is his first start, and he's looked good in the first two appearances. Kareem, faint sky hook. Not that time, Parrish clears. Here's Isaiah. And he turned it over. But he made a pretty good behind-the-back move before he did. Well, I'll tell you, they're a little anxious right now. They all want to get together and to try that, find the, the proper balance of music. Uh, they're going at each other pretty heavy right now. The tempo very, very quick. Adrian Denley, or Alex English, that is, with a reverse layoff. So uh, Denver Nugget scores the first basket for the West All Stars. Julia serving. And now here comes the Iceman, English, one of the prolific scorers in the NBA, and Magic Johnson, Dantley, loses the ball, Moncrief, it's going to be an East basket, shades of the slam dunk championship of yesterday, he made a house call. Dr. J was the defending champion, and he went right down to the wire with Larry Nance of the Phoenix Suns. We are going to have highlights of the slam dunk championship coming up at halftime. Pat O'Brien, by the way, is the third member of our team, and he is here at McNichols Arena, and we'll be hearing from him throughout the afternoon. In the meantime, we have a personal foul on Sidney Moncrief. Let's tell you who our officials are. Earl Strom and John Vanek are working the game, and Lee Jones is the alternate. Great matchup to watch for this afternoon is Magic Johnson and Isaiah Thomas, man for man, pushing at each other as only they can. Kareem missed the second shot after George Gervin missed outside. Here's Isaiah Thomas. Kareem, the rebound. Loses the ball, Sidney Moncrief. Has that other off guard doing his thing, picking up the offensive rebound. Adrian Dantley coming right back. Oh! Shooting is off in the early going. Here's Magic, loose ball. It is 6-2, to two, the East leading with 9.38 to go in the first period. Robert Parrish against Kareem, and we all have a foul. What they love to do in these games is get off and running quick. It takes them a little while to adjust to the tempo. A lot of them really haven't played fast basketball, uh, uh, some of these players. Uh, the coaches have slowed down systems, so they're all trying to get into the rhythm of the game. Kareem commits the foul. Larry Bird missed, and Thomas fighting inside. You'll notice Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is not wearing his goggles. Well, for the second time in three years, he has forgotten his goggles from the hotel room. So... Kareem is just going to have to go without him, or maybe someone will get him for him. Right Send now he's for a cab. Send for a cab. Three. three. Four-point lead. When they don't have the break, they're going to try and go inside. Danley. Feed from Magic Johnson. Well, they were so intent on trying to deny the ball to Jabbar and let Danley sneak right in there. Bird is guarded by Alex English. Parrish, he has got a good outside shot. Oh, push now. Gervin the rebound. Watch the ball. The West didn't know the ball was on the outlet. Here's the alley -oop to Julius Irving. That's why they love to play together in the All-Star game, to make things like that happen. How tough is it, after just one practice session, to really tune in together like that? Oh, it's very difficult. You really, really have, just have in your mind the way these guys play. you got to go out there and execute it on the floor. It takes a little while to get into it. Harris the rebound. The shooting has been less than satisfactory, but not for good Julius Irving, who has his third basket of the ball game, and he is putting on an open court show. Steal by the doctor, and another basket. But the tempo of this thing is just so quicklish, and a foul at the other end. Oh. It is up and down and up and down, and let's watch Julius's steal right here. And up it comes, and beautiful reverse layup 
but they are heads up to play aggressive offense and aggressive defense. The reason that they love to fast break is because there's so much more creativity involved in a fast break than the slow down systems of play. Alex English, the NBA's top scorer last year. With a free throw, it's 12-7 to 7 in favor of the East. Larry Bird, and that looked like they've been working on that for a week. Little up pick, and Isaiah, with the create, creative pass, made it happen. We have a timeout. 8.04 remaining in the first period. The East, and Frank Layton is trying to break the losing streak. Let's watch that last pass. Little up pick you'll see, and Isaiah heads up to make it happen. Watch the bounce pass through the defense. Beautiful. That's why people are saying Isaiah Thomas not only is going to be one of the great point guards of the NBA, one of the great personalities. You saw his smile at the top of our program. We'll be back. Julius Irving has eight of the East, 14 points. English, five of the West, seven. And Pat O'Brien is with John Havlicek. Pat? Thank you, Dick. John Havlicek, you know, arguably the best six man in the business. When you see these guys, the Birds, the Johnsons, do you see the same enthusiasm you had out there? Well, they certainly do have a lot of enthusiasm. I think the guy that really has displayed it the most is Isaiah. He's going up and down the floor with a smile, and he's making great passes. And, of course, when you have dunks, it always brings a great deal of excitement. Okay, Hondo, thank you. Back to Dick. Thank you, Pat. The West has turned the ball over seven times in the first four minutes. The shooting has been down, and this game picking up, as we saw right before the timeout. End to end action. Magic Johnson guarded by Isaiah Thomas into the big guy, Kareem. Skyhook. But the rebound by Magic Johnson at the other end. Well, that's a tough matchup for uh, Isaiah to block Magic, who's one of the best rebounding forwards, let alone guards. Now, come on. He's been up around not 10 rebounds a game. He's a 6'9 point guard who can play five positions. Moncrief gets it in the middle. Quick pass, Julius. Bird, he's tough here. But it falls off. Isaiah Thomas with a fake on Magic Johnson. They weren't ready for that pass, and Adrian Dantley gets it out to Magic Johnson. Johnson. Kareem, easy one for the big guy. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who is second leading scorer all time to Wilt Chamberlain. And if he averages 20.4 points a game the rest of the year, he'll break Wilt Chamberlain's all-time scoring record. Bird gets free. Isaiah having a ball, trying to find Larry Bird, who moves so well without the ball. Isaiah Thomas is in a, a show unto himself so far in this ball game. Alex English. They got scorers, don't they, Tommy, the West team? That's why they're here, Dick. They all can stick it in the hoop, and they've got varied other skills. Parrish coming into the flow. Look how he moves for a big man. That's a seven-footer, and you talk about Ralph Sampson's ability to shoot from the perimeter and handle the ball. Robert Parrish shows a little bit. Here's Adrian Danley, not this time. I'll tell you, Robert Parrish and some of these other big guys you'll see in this game can really get it up and down the court, and that's even going to help the pace of the game more. Thomas, he had the layup, and he's shaking his head. He knows he should have had this one. Magic! Little French pastry there. Bird to Moncrief, who challenges George Gervin, tipped in by Julius. And 10 points for Julius Irving. He has 10 of the East 20 points and a 7-point lead. Magic slows it up a little bit now, but not for long. Gervin in the lane, basket counts, and a foul. What a pretty move by George Gervin, who has been a scoring champion for four straight years. But Isaiah Thomas, Larry Bird, here's Bird. And watch this pass. Length of the court, Moncrief heading for the hoop, and he misses it, but guess who's there? The surgeon, Dr. J. Julius Irving, so Irving with 10 points in the ball game, and here's our first substitution, Andrew Toney. Deadly offensive score, averaging over 20 points a game. He can beat you outside, drive to the hoop. He comes into the ball game. And he replaces Sidney Moncrief. I like Andrew Turney. He has expanded his skills from the first time he stepped onto an NBA court to right now he's a bona fide all-star. Moncrief goes out with two personal fouls and four points. Tony goes inside. That's the quickness he has. The balls are just not dropping for a lot of players so far in this game. Long shot by the Iceman. George Gerber. He's starting to heat up. This is his eighth All-Star game in a row. He was the MVP four years ago. And now we have a foul against the West. And it'll be against Adrian Bentley. When you have Dr. J 
really moves him with rhythm. You've got a man-sized pass trying to stop him. Casey Jones, your former teammate, and he was the winning coach in 1975. A great guy, and he deserves to be in this game coaching it. It's been the rebirth of Casey Jones as a head coach with the Boston Celtics. Parrish with another shot from outside. You get a center that can hit the outside shot and also do the job inside. Well, the Celtics have the best record in the NBA. That says enough. Roger Kareem. Roger Kareem. <laughs> and it goes in. Let's see who gets credit for the basket. When you think of it's Kareem, Kareem. Abdul-Jabbar, you think of the sky hook. Julius, what a move inside. Oh, Parrish. Foul. Julius almost had a blind, spectacular 360-degree shot. He has, along with Thomas, been a great show. We're going to see this once more. Watch him take it to the hook, spin beautifully off it. Really gets contained. You can't see it as Jabbar try to stop it. He flips it up there, and I'll be if it almost doesn't go in. Bar Parrish on the rebound gets fouled, but you are seeing some real, real inventiveness by Dr. J. Substitutions, Kiki Vandaway, who is having a terrific scoring year for... The Denver Nuggets averaging 29 points a game in his third year, and Jeff Ruland is in the game. There he is, one of the burly strong men of the league. He's among NBA leaders in three areas. Kareem backs it in. It's a close game. The East had an eight-point lead at one time, and now their lead is shaved to one, 23-22, 440 remaining in the first period. Dick Stockton, Tom Heights are here at Denver, Colorado. Julius flips it in and over the head of Robert Parrish. You know, the East has got a lot more movement in their set offense than the West has right now, as we see Bernard King coming in for the East from the New York Knickerbockers, replacing Julius Irving, who goes out with 10, and Jack Sigma, who's bringing the Seattle Sonics back in the Pacific Division, comes into the game, and they have a lot of height in there with Kareem and Sigma at the same time. You know, Bernard King might uh, really be a, a, a factor in this ball game to, to look at because he's being turned loose, and I always considered him a great fast-break player. Durbin, the last time, got the basket. Andrew Tony comes down. So now we're going to see some shooting, which we have not seen in the early moments of this ball game. Durbin one in, Tony the other. Sigma has a good shot. And Parrish gets the rebound. The West leading, led 24-23, their first lead. The East took over the lead. Now the West with Magic Johnson in the crowd. Kiki Vandaway. They're going to love any Denver achievement here today by English or Vandaway, that's for sure. Yep, guess where they're from? Denver. Bernard King coming off the screen. Parrish keeps it alive for the East All-Stars. Seven rebounds for Robert Parrish and Andrew Tony. Magic Johnson. Oh, they love that. Look at that. Wow. He's fouled going in. And coming in now. Substitutions. Magic got hit in the eye. Isaiah Thomas, they're good friends. But coming into the ball game now, Kevin McHale for the East. He's the sixth man of the Boston Celtics. And Ralph Sampson, the only rookie in the game from Houston, number 50 who had a 50-foot shot against the Boston Celtics earlier this year. Walter Davis, number six, comes into the backcourt. There's Ralph Sampson, and it's got to be a thrill to play this game as a rookie. I, and I'll tell you something. He is my pick for the surprise MVP. I think that uh, he really wants to make himself known on the pro level, and where better to do it than right here in the All-Star game. Uh, you know, the people said he's been hot and cold, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised today if you saw some spectacular games or a game from Ralph Sampson. Well, you know that uh, the Rockets already have won more games this year than they did last year, so Ralph Sampson has paid dividends. The West, trailing most of this first period, have a three-point lead, 28-25. We have 317 remaining in the first period, and we'll be back. One of the great stories of the NBA this year, Frank Layton, one of the real funny men of the NBA and the Utah Jazz with the best record in the Western Conference coaching. He said, I told my players, make believe this is going to be the last All-Star game you ever played. I know this will be the last one I ever coach. Well, I'll tell you, Frank Layden is a great guy, funny man, as you said, and just signed to a 10-year contract as general manager and coach by the Jazz. That's how much they appreciate him in the big sky country. And today, and today is Frank Layton Day in Buffalo, where he went to school at Niagara and coached Calvin Murphy in Niagara. Turnover, 
And Sigma stepped on the line. One of the problems the East is going to have right now, Dick, is uh, Robert Parrish, their only bona fide real running center. And he's going to somebody right now, uh, Ruland or Mikhail, is going to have to try and stay with Ralph Sampson. Ruland inside uses his strength and bulk effectively. And the West, Ruland, Braun, and Brains in action. Sigma at the baseline. Mikhail plays it well. Vandaway was looking for a foul. Ruling the rebound. And it's picked off by Davis. Here's Magic Johnson who has eight assists in the ball game. He gets a basket. Keep in mind that last year Johnson set an all-star record with 16 assists. He is halfway there right now and we still have two and a half minutes remaining in the first period. Knocked away. It is still going to be. East ball, Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn here at McNichols Arena in Denver. 2.26 to go in the first period. The West lead 30 to 27 here in the 34th annual All-Star Game. Uh, how many were you in? To tell you the truth, I don't remember, Dick. It was either five or six, but uh, I enjoyed each and every one of them thoroughly. I did coach a few, and I know what guys like Casey Jones and Frank Layden uh, are trying to do right now. They're trying to showcase everybody, make sure that they all get their just due, and still make this a very competitive game. I want to remind you that Moses Malone is not here. He topped a record number of votes with 927,000 votes to be the Eastern Center. He is the NBA's MVP of last year. Has a sprained ankle. Bill Lambeer replaced him on the roster, and Robert Parrish got the nod to start by Casey Jones. And a record number of 2.5 million people voted. The fans, of course, voted for the starters. There's Ricky Green, a rags-to-riches story. Couldn't fit in with any club. Played in the Continental League, which is the minor league, and has starred this year for Utah. Otis Birdsong from the New Jersey Nets with a good move to the hoop. It's stuffed through by Kevin McHale. To follow up on that Ricky Green thing, uh, that's, he's really a tribute to Frank Layden's patience. He was a great star at the University of Michigan. Walter Davis hits from outside. Walter Davis of the Phoenix Suns. Under two minutes to go now in the first period. The West leading by three. The East had an eight-point lead early in the game when both teams were cold from the field. Bernard King in the lane. Goaltending against Ralph Sampson. Give the basket to Bernard King. But he was ready to sneak right back in there and protect that hoop. He'll get more than a few shot blocks in this game, Ralph Sampson. Ralph Sampson, baseline. What a move. That's a tough shot from the baseline. It sure is, but who's going to stop a seven foot four guy? Samson coming out for the moment to meet Tony McHale. Bernard King quickly turning around. And Ralph Sampson the rebound of Vandaway. So far, in a couple of plays, Samson has looked, to make you look good. He's looked pretty good, but uh, he's not running like I thought he might do in this game. Basket counts and a foul. And how's that for a move? Seven feet four. He was playing like it was 6-5. A seven-footer. This is not an easy thing. Watch him take it to the hoop. Takes the blow by Mikhail on the way down. And it's pretty far on the way down for a seven-foot-four guy. Still connects. Mikhail with the foul. 37-31, the West. With the biggest lead now for them. The East had an eight-point lead early. We have 1-10 to go in the first period. Dick Stockton and Tom Heisman reporting. Mikhail outside. Sigma the rebound. And look at Ricky Green. All the way up. for Ricky Green. Feeding Samson. Forget it. And a foul. Now that's one of the reasons why I thought Samson might be absolutely fantastic in this game. Because of the likes of Ricky Green and Magic Johnson dishing it off after they made the penetration. And watch the big guy cram it. Ricky Green leads the NBA in steals. Last year he was second in assists. Turnover gives it right back now to the West. Ruling having his problem with the outlet passes to try and get the East back in their style of fast break. And Ralph Sampson, your sleeper for an MVP pick, has scored seven straight points for the West. Leading by eight points, and now they turn it over. So the West turning it over to the East with 50 seconds to go in the first period. For those people that haven't seen Sam, Ralph Sampson, he gets it up and down the court probably better than any center that has ever played the game. Birdsong gets it into Rulin. Rulin and Sigma, a lot of beef there. McHale with a fake and a foul. Good play by Kevin McHale. 
And the foul is on Ralph Sampson. Kevin McHale is having a terrific season for the Boston Celtics and one of the reasons why they have a five-game lead over the Philadelphia 76ers right now. When he first came into the NBA, he was probably one of the finest defenders that I ever saw come in as a rookie. Since then, he's added dramatically to the offensive part of his game to where he's become a true threat inside for the Celtics. Of all the things he does, what's the best thing you think? Defense, I really think. Uh, he may not think so right now, but he is a second intimidator for the Celts along with Robert Parrish. It makes it awfully difficult to score inside against Boston. Both teams in the penalty. So that's two shots, and of course, McHale was hit in the act of shooting, misses the second free throw. Here comes Ricky Green. Watch out from behind. Andrew Tony made a good play, knocking it away from behind. He's working against Green now. 27 seconds to go, and 18 on the 24 second shot clock in the period. Green, Tony. Tony Strong. Can't let him hit the outside shot. Birdsaw, good defense by Waller Davis. And Tony with. Five seconds on the shot clock, way off, sick with the rebound, and a foul at the other end. So Otis Birdsong foul, Jack Sigma with eight seconds to go, and he will shoot two with eight seconds to go and a chance to put the West up by nine. Well, Magic ignited this East team very early, kept the pressure. We thought Isaiah really did the same thing for the East team, but Magic Johnson was making his assists pay off. And right now, I think we're seeing uh, the culmination that both units that have played so far are actually into the ball game and getting their rhythm with this fast break style. They were rusty early, but they're not so much now. Some of the shots are, are off the mark. You wouldn't see it uh, during the course of the regular season. Well, one of the things that happens in a game like this, Dick, is the fact that without it being too, uh, being able to be structured too much by the coaches, a lot of things happen that uh, happen by accident. Uh, you're taking shots where normally you might not take the shot with your regular team, but they love to play it. Five seconds to go. The West is up by eight. Andrew Tony trying to get free for a shot. And the block, it was a block, no foul, and that is the end of the first period of the 34th Annual All-Star Game. The West leading the East, 40 to 32. They're back in Denver, Colorado at McNichols Arena, the 34th annual All-Star Game. Over 17,000 fans here to see this game. Tom, you have talked about why this game is so interesting, and the players love it because they can run. They're unshackled, so to speak, and there are players in this game, like Bernard King and others, who have play in different systems, and I think they look forward to this kind of setting. Absolutely, and uh, a guy like Bernard King plays for UB Brown, who's more structured in what he tries to do, doesn't turn the players loose, and uh, they look forward probably to playing in this type of game because they can express themselves as an artist, as a true artist, as a great basketball player. They love it. Bill Lane Beer, number 40, who was named to the team when Moses Malone couldn't play from the Detroit Pistons, is in there right now. And Jim Paxson, number 5, from Portland, is also in the ball game. Mark Aguirre, number 24, from Dallas. He's guarding Bernard King now. Paxson is on Birdsong. And here is Bernard King with a turnaround shot. He is so quick. This is his second All-Star game. Appeared with Golden State a couple of years ago. And a six-point West lead. His role has changed a little bit uh, more to a defensive player. But when he gets in that low hole, nobody can stop Bernard King. Turnover. Lambeer picks it up. We're in the second period. Opening minute. Andrew Tony, McHale. Sigma quickly picks him up. Loose ball. And King is held. You know, surprisingly, the East is really going to Bernard King down there in that low hole to try and get some inside game going. First personal foul on Jack Sigma and the first team foul here in the second period. Ricky Green, steal. What a play by Ricky Green or Ralph Sampson. And Mark McGuire to Ralph Sampson, Paxson. Oh, Paxson again. They did everything but score. And a steal by Ricky Green again. And... The name of the game is to fill the hole, and that, they did everything but do that. Spectacular play, though. Tony looking for McHale. Samson's tough target. Boy, Ricky Green is playing like a man possessed out there. McHale, good turnaround, and that was by from 17 feet. That is, is his best shot, that fallaway jumper, Kevin McHale. Here's a guy that's built like a tank, but moves like a ballerina. Mark Aguirre, the first all-star ever from the Dallas Mavericks, who are having a terrific year. Second place in the Midwest Division. Aguirre, look at Mark Aguirre. 
who's averaging 30 points a game, second to Adrian Dantley in the NBA scoring Woo! leadership. Thanks, Bernard, Bernard King comes back. Pace is picking up, Tommy. It is, and Bernard King, you can see, loving to play this fast break style. And here's Andrew Tony at the other end. Now it was Paxson. Paxson, Paxson slipped by. Right, Paxson got by. Tony. You know, he's a guy who can move without the ball effectively, and he looked good in last year's game. McHale fouled by Ralph Sampson. Ricky Green making the most of his first All-Star appearance. Sitting on the outlet pass, sneaks right in there with that great speed, and up. The only thing that happened is he didn't make the jump shot right here like you would have hoped that he'd do. And watch this one, goes onto the scorer's table. He has got super quickness. Everybody knew that, Ricky Green, when he first came into the pros, but he didn't have the outside shot. And it took a little patience by a coach like Frank Layden to put him in a system and give him his head to develop. Ralph Sampson committed the foul. Here's Kelly Trapuca, also of the Detroit Pistons. They have three stars. Lane Beer, Trapuca, and Isaiah Thomas. He's an exciting player, and he's in the game now for the East squad. He's wearing number seven, but the West has the ball with Mark McGuire, number 24. Five-point lead for the West with 9.52 to go in the first half. McGuire to the hoop. That's why he's so effective. He can hit that outside shot. You saw him hit the 20-footer, and then he takes it nicely to the hoop on a strong drive. McHale misses. Bernard King battles. Bernard King is playing this game like it's the seventh game of a playoff. He is fouled by Jack Sigma. The foul is on Jack Sigma. Second personal foul for Jack Sigma. And three team fouls on the West, none for the East, and 9.40 remain in this second period. It's 46 to 39, the West is leading the East. Keep in mind, the East has won four in a row. No one has ever won five in a row in this All-Star game. Casey Jones hopes to set a record tonight. The biggest lead for the East was eight points. The biggest lead for the West was eight, and it's 46 to 39 with 9.40 remaining in the second period here at McNichols Arena. Dick Stockton with Tom Heinsohn. And a couple of All-Stars, George Gervin and Alex English. Well, I'm impressed the way the West have gotten their game together a lot quicker than the East, but one of the factors that the East is facing right now is that they're without the services of probably the the most muscle center that would make a significant contribution in a game like this, Moses Malone. Larry Bird comes back in the ball game, talking about big centers, there's Ralph Sampson, and we are seeing Frank Layden go with Kareem and Sampson early, and now Sigma and Sampson, so Frank Layden, who earlier said, I may put all three of them in at the same time. That's a lot of power up front, and uh, the curly headed guy, Ralph, uh, Jack Sigma, really tickles me. I mean, he plays it tough down there, and he's got one of those shots that nobody seems to be able to block, as we're looking at Bernard King, who, uh, in my opinion, would be a super wingman on a fast break type of team, and yet has the intelligence to know how to play in a very structured system. This is the second and a foul, loose ball foul. That's the second time that Sigma, he was hit by Kelly Trapuca. There's Paxson. He's one of the players who could have it, usually does have a good game. He did last year. Why is that? Because he's playing with some creative passes, and anytime a guy keeps moving the way Paxson does to shake himself loose, that's what a passer looks for. It's a good backcourt. Ricky Green who gets the pass, and Paxson. Coming back is King. Open court for Bernard King. Bernard King and Mark McGuire didn't see it because he was knocked over right near us. And I didn't see Bernard King make the basket because McGuire was in my soft drink. Four-point lead now for the West. 9-10 remaining in the first half. Sigma and a foul. You don't normally see what we see in the NBA, which is double-teaming the center inside. We call it double down, but we did there with the likes of Isaiah Thomas and Larry Bird on Jack Sigma, and we had a personal foul on Isaiah Thomas. You might see a little bit of that against uh, in the latter stages of the game because so many teams do do that as normal part of their regular defense. Trapuca. That was Paxson getting free that like we talked about before for that jump shot. I don't even missed it. Larry Bird guarded by Paxson and now Sigma there. They had a... A mismatch on defense, and 
trying to take advantage of it of the east and there is a foul as well and the personal foul is on Mark Aguirre. You're going to see great passes like this all day long. Little lay down pass to the cutter Kelly Tripuca and that's why uh, scorers like to play in these games with the likes of Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, Ricky Green and Magic Johnson who pass the ball so well. Kelly Tripuca they said he was too slow, didn't play much defense, but he hustles, plays with gusto. He was out 24 games with any injury last year. He's been an all-star and leads the Pistons, averaging over 22 and a half points a game. And it's now 46-43, with 8.45 remaining in the first half. The West leading after the East took the early lead. Paxson inside to Aguirre. Aguirre over King, and a foul. King was all over Mark Aguirre, and he was playing him well defensively, and Bernard's called for the foul. Boy, Mark Aguirre, one of the reasons he's going to be a great, great player for the next several years is the fact he goes outside, he shoots over you, he drives by you if you try to stop that, and he also, with that big body of his, takes you down low and muscles you. Three team fouls on the east. Mark Aguirre from DePaul. He was in Dick Mata's doghouse for a while down in Dallas, but he has blossomed as a star. I would say averaging over 30 a game with you. And he's going to be a star for a lot more years to come. And look who's back in here handling the ball. Isaiah Thomas. Yes, sir. Isaiah Thomas sparked the East early in the game. In fact, three Pistons are out there now and a turnover. Lambeer, Trapuca, and Thomas, and that's not a bad idea. Well, we just saw Ralph Sampson intimidate Trapuca on a layup. Bird. And Lambeer gets a piece of it. Trapuca can't save it. So... What Casey Jones uh, is trying to do right now is play combinations of uh, players that play together normally to see if they can get something going. Well, the cheer is for Julius Irving, who's getting up from the bench. He has scored 10 points early in the ball game, and Alex English will also be coming in. Mark Aguirre with eight points and is now the leading scorer for the West All-Stars. Traveling call the other way. And here comes Julius Serving. He is the leading scorer in the game, coming back in. Two-time MVP. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, still without the goggles, comes in for the Western All-Stars. And, of course, Alex English, representing the Denver Nuggets. I guess they couldn't find a cab. They may be busy now. Jim Paxson. And that's what you're talking about, getting free for the open shot. Now. He does that as well as anybody. Reminds me of John Havlicek in that regard. Isaiah Thomas loses it. Paxson to Green. I like those West guards in there right now, and KC Jones wants to talk it over. He doesn't want it to get out of hand. He wants to show everybody that he's still going and still play everybody and still not let the game get away. And right now we have the biggest lead in the game for either side. The West All-Stars, 54 to 43, 738 remaining in the first half. And coming up at the half today, you'll see the NBA Slam Dunk Competition. One of the major sideshows during the All-Star Weekend here in Denver featuring double barrel action like this. And we'll also show you some of basketball's great names of the past in the old-timers game. This is just some of the action. All that and more coming up at the half. Back to Dick. Thank you very much, Pat. Glad to have you with us here on the NBA on CBS. Eight straight points for the West, their biggest lead in the ball game. And Frank Layton says, I want everyone to play equal amount of time. Every one of their 12 players have scored so far in the game, Tom. Well, he's entering into it with a little bit different philosophy than Casey Jones. Casey Jones saying, hey, I want to really play most of the guys that were selected by the fans uh, and still show the other guys who were selected by the coaches for a little bit. All right, Isaiah Thomas. And Sidney Moncrief are in there along with Parrish, Irving, and Bird. The starting five for the East. Not so for the West. Parrish has hit his third shot from outside. He has seven points in the game. Irving with ten and King nine are the top scores for the East. The West leading scorer is Mark Aguirre with eight points. Ricky Green, he's looked good. Here's Aguirre. Bird on him. He's traveling. Bird played well. Came right up on him, Tommy. Why, Larry Bird does so many great things. And one of the great things is that defense he just showed you. Isaiah Thomas, guarded by Ricky Green. That's a good matchup. So is Paxson and Moncrief. English and Julius Irving. And English got a piece of it. Ricky Green. Alex English, wide open. Uh, Alex
Alex knows how to fast break, and so does Ricky Green. The doctor to Parrish over Kareem. You got to go really high over him. Well, maybe not so much the seven foot Robert. Aguirre. Paxson from the Portland Trailblazers, who are challenging for real the Laker domination in the Pacific Division this year. They sure are. Uh, the East now trying to slow it down and get a little more patent offense in there. When did you think that was ever going to happen with these players? Nope. Biggest lead of the game now, 13 points, and another turnover. Aguirre, Ricky Green, Alex English, and the West is going wild here in Denver. English is 5 for 5, and his 11 points makes him the high score in the ballgame so far. Irving. 60 to 45, 15 point lead. And foul against the West. Walter Davis and Magic Johnson are heading back in the ball game. There's Magic. The Magic, the West is leading by 15 and then they bring Magic Johnson back in. That's a pretty good fast break team you got right there on the bench. Ricky Green was used to doing that and doing it very, very well. And now Magic Johnson comes in, the super push up man with the Lakers who's got more than an average bunch of players to lay it off to. That's why he does so well assist-wise in these playoff, in these uh, all-star games. But right now, the East Dick is, is really having a problem just getting something going offensively. The fast break is not working, and their inside game that they're trying to capitalize isn't really coordinated because of the fact that they don't play together a lot. They've been outscored 14-2, to two, Tommy. Ricky Green committed the foul on Julius, who missed his first free throw and makes good on the second. So it's 60 to 46 with just under six minutes remaining in the first half. Magic Johnson guarded by Isaiah Thomas. They're very close as Mark Aguirre. And a steal almost by Moncrief. And John Vanek says we'll take it back this way. It's going to be East, I think. And now Earl Strom changes his mind. And it's West Ball and Casey Jones. About as mad as he let's ever gets, Tom. Uh, I think it's a frown as the maddest he ever gets. I never see him get angry. Never. Aguirre inside against Bird. Mark Aguirre with 10 points in the ball game, representing the Dallas Mavericks. He has not missed in four attempts. Today. Well, the West generating some inside game with Mark Aguirre. Bird. Larry Bird bombs away. He has yet to really get his game going, Larry. Just a little bit on defense, but when he gets that offense going, watch out. 5.15 remaining in the first half. Kareem back to match it. And Paris got a hand on it. Broke up the two Lakers from getting something going on a two-man situation. Sidney Moncrief. Thomas, still alive for the Eastern All-Stars. And Julius Irving. What a play by the doctor. An invention we just saw. A new way. He is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, ambassador to the game of pro basketball, and there have been many good ones. He's got the game, he's got the smile, he's got everything. Walter Davis of Phoenix outside. And the points are coming now with 440 remaining in the first half, a 14-point lead for the West. Feed from Thomas inside. Moncrief and the two guards make it happen inside. Isaiah loved to penetrate, get everybody looking at him, and then drop it off. He did it beautifully that time to Moncrief. Two snappy guards out there. Isaiah Thomas and Sidney Moncrief voted by the fans. Two and a half million in all. Foul. And Thomas got a hand on Kareem. Isaiah Thomas making the pass as only he can to Doc. Watch him invent this one. Gets knocked off balance. Nobody makes shots off balance better, I believe, than Dr. J. Isaiah Thomas has three personal fouls in the ball game. That's more than anyone. He remains in the contest as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar goes to the line. Adrian Danley, AD, from Washington's DeMatha High School in Notre Dame. He's into the ball game now. So Dantley, along with Waller Davis, Magic Johnson, Alex English, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bird, Thomas, Parrish, Irving, and Moncrief. Still the five who started the game in there for the East. So like you said, Casey Jones going with his starters more than Frank Layton. I think he probably wants to do that without the services of uh, Moses Malone. He's going to stay with those that first unit more. Here's Waller Davis, the Greyhound. Open court, Magic Johnson. Passes to English. Back inside, Hold Danley looking Hold for somebody. Magic Johnson behind his back. 
But the East picks it off and a lead pass to Julius. Out of bounds. Even Dr. J couldn't track that one down. And Kiki Vandaway comes back in the ball game for the West. Big favorite here. It's one nugget for another. Alex English goes out of the game. English has scored 11 points. He is the leading scorer for the West. Mark Aguirre has 10. And the Doctor has 13 to lead everybody. Vandaway going against Bird inside. Look at Julius go high for the board. Out to Bird. To Thomas. Thomas said, I got to do something with the ball. Now he thought he'd be able to lay it back to the trailer, but they played him for it. And Kareem on the drive in the other end. And Magic Johnson found him, as he does so many times during the regular season for the Los Angeles Lakers. And Magic Johnson has 11 assists. I would say that Magic Johnson wants the West to win. He said so before the game. He told Pat O'Brien he's trying to make it happen. in the first half, a 14-point lead for the West. Feed from Thomas, inside, Huncreep, and the two guards make it happen, inside. Isaiah loved to penetrate, get everybody looking at him, and then drop it off. He did it beautifully that time to Huncreep. Two snappy guards out there. Isaiah Thomas and Sidney Huncreep voted by the fans. Two and a half million in the ball. Foul, and Thomas got a hand on Kareem. Isaiah Thomas making the pass as only he can to Doc. Watch him invent this one. It's knocked off balance. Nobody makes shots off balance better, I believe, than Dr. J. Isaiah Thomas has three personal fouls in the ball game. That's more than anyone. He remains in the contest as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar goes to the line. Adrian Danley, AD, from Washington's DeMatha High School at Notre Dame. He's into the ball game now. So Dantley, along with Waller Davis, Magic Johnson, Alex English, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bird, Thomas, Parrish, Irving, and Moncrief. Still the five who started the game in there for the East. So as you said, Casey Jones going with his starters more than Frank Lake. I think he probably wants to do that without the services of uh, Moses Malone. He's going to stay with those that first unit more. Here's Waller Davis, the Greyhound. Open court, Magic Johnson. Passes to English. Back inside, Danley looking for somebody. Magic Johnson behind his back. But the East picks it off and a lead pass to Julius. Out of bounds. Even Dr. J couldn't track that one down. And Kiki Vandaway comes back in the ball game for the West. Big favorite here. It's one nugget for another. Alex English goes out of the game. English has scored 11 points. He is the leading scorer for the West. Mark Aguirre has 10. And the Doctor has 13 to lead everybody. Vandaway uh -huh. going against Bird inside. Look at Julius go high for the board. Out to Bird. To Thomas. Thomas said, I got to do something with the ball. Now he thought he'd be able to lay it back to the trailer, but they played him for it. And Kareem on the drive in the other end. And Magic Johnson found him, as he does so many times during the regular season for the Los Angeles Lakers. And Magic Johnson has 11 assists. I would say that Magic Johnson wants the West to win. He said so before the game. He told Pat O'Brien he's trying to make it happen. WBC Super Lightweight Champion Bruce Curry, who defeated Sugar Ray Leonard in the amateur ranks, puts his crown on the line today against undefeated Billy Costello. 16 knockouts amongst his 26-0 record. Women's World Speed Speed Skating Championships and John Madden's Journeys, Tom. Yes, and two guys that went in different directions, Bruce Seals and Sugar Ray Leonard after their great Olympics in 76. Ray Seals, Sugar I'm Ray sorry. A Seal. couple yep. of Sugar Rays, I guess you'd Sugar say. Rays. And men's giant slalom report coming up. Curry Costello and John Madden's journeys along with Women's World Speed Skating Championships coming up next on CBS Sports Sunday. 68 to 52, the biggest lead in the ball game for the West All-Stars. The West has led since going ahead in the first period, 26-25. Julius Irving can't save the ball, and it is West ball. 
Well, that little set play didn't work for the East, and here comes Magic on the fly again. Magic Johnson going inside. Harris gets the rebound, knocked away, and a foul call against Kareem, I believe. Going for the loose ball. It is against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This is the kind of game where we have two coaches, and Frank Layden and Casey Jones, who believe in the relaxed, low-key approach. Yeah, and what Casey Jones and Frank Layden are known for more than anything else is communication with their players. And uh, Frank Layden in particular, communicating with patience. Casey Jones, uh, low-key, talks to his players on an individual basis, and really I don't think ever kind of lays them out with verbal abuse and uh, uh, one of the reasons why they like to play for Casey Jones the Boston Celtics Robert Paris who enjoys it eight points so far in the ball game he has nine rebounds he was second to Larry Bird in MVP balloting a couple of years ago in this game 240 remaining in the first half 68 to 53 the West leading the East the East has won four in a row and lead 22 to 11 in the all-round series Walter Davis this is from the corner and the East has a chance to come back. And that four games straight by the East is weighing heavy on Magic Johnson's mind and he's got the ability to communicate that to the rest of his West teammates. Bird, rebound, Magic. Running the court is Walter Davis. Let's we'll see if Magic rewards him. Loose ball and I think the East was ready for a Magic pass. Bird, Harris, blocked by Kareem. That's the best block shot of the game and Frank Layton put both his arms in the air. Johnson to an open, Walter Davis. One great play leads to another. 17 point lead, biggest of the game, under two minutes to play in the first half. Moncrief for Robert Paris. Bird, the offensive rebound, the basket, and the foul. So a couple of Celtics trying to make things happen for the East. We're going to see right now, coming up the court, left Larry Bird, number 33, laying it in there to Robert Parrish, and watch that other 33, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, save it, and up the court. Well, we missed that end, uh, Magic Johnson, great pass to set up Alex English in the corner. But the East team having great difficulty getting their offense on track. Larry Bird has nine. The West in control. Adrian Danley. And here is Sidney Moncrief pushing it up. Moncrief who can penetrate with the best of them. Couldn't score. And here comes Magic Johnson. He's got Kareem and Danley. The trailer is Vandaway. He'll go to Kareem. Slapped away by Bird. And taken away by Andrew Toney. Up ahead of the field. Bird to Dr. J. And Bird could have taken the shot, but he went to Julius Irving, and it's now a 70-58 to 58 game. I want to remind you, coming up at halftime, Pat O'Brien with the slam dunk championship and old-timer highlights. Tony, three on one. East, Julius again. Well, uh, East team getting their break going. All it took was a little rebounding off the defensive board and some good defense to make it happen. And a 17-point lead has been cut to 10, and Julius Irving has 17 points now. Watch this situation here. Great pickup by Tony. Starts the action. Up to Bird. And you can have it, Dr. J. You make it look better. You know, many of his slam dunks we have seen so far in this game. Slam dunks from yesterday. Boy, that was really something to watch. Here's Frank Layden in the huddle. Frank Layden telling his ball club, look, guys, we got to get back on the D, or at least control the, uh, the board, make sure they don't get the good outlets to get that break going. But that's awfully difficult to do. Frank Layden went to Niagara and in an amateur stage production will play the role of the coach in the championship season. How prophetic. Great gentleman, Frank Layden. Kiki Vandaway, top of the key, brings out the cheers here at McNichols Arena. 12-point lead, 31 seconds remaining in the first half. Bird to Julius, who has 17 points. Andrew Tony wide open. You can bank on it. Second basket for Tony. Ten-point game. A couple of Celtics, a couple of Sixers, and a buck thrown in there. Vandaway again. So Kiki Vandaway personally is matching the East basket for basket here with nine seconds to go. Bird off the rim. It'll be West ball with five seconds to play. And I think the West wants to push it up in a hurry. Johnson 
It counts at the half. Does he want to win, Tommy? He said it at the top. We said it in the middle. And he's showing us at the half. And I'll tell you one thing. The West wants to end this four-game East winning streak. We'll be back with Pat O'Brien at halftime in just a moment. Back to McNichols Arena for the 34th annual NBA All-Star Game. The West in a surprise, leading the East 76-62 to at halftime. And Tom Heights and Magic Johnson last year set a record with 16 assists. He has 12 so far. That's a big part of the reason why the West is upsetting the East. They're making their fast break attempts really pay off, and Magic's the guy that's doing it. Uh, the rebounds are practically even, but when they're getting that ball off the board and getting that break started, Magic is hitting the right guy at the right time. Most Moses Malone, of course, is not here, the dominating center in the league. Of course, Robert Parrish and Lane Beer are here also uh, for the Eastern All-Stars. What is Moses' absence? Uh, how has it affected the East? The East was conceded before this game to have the superior rebounding strength, and without Moses being here, that is a, a real significant factor, I believe, in this ballgame. Robert Parrish is a good rebounder, but certainly uh, Moses Malone makes those bodies fly underneath there, and I think it would have been really helpful if he'd been here for the East. Okay, and uh, we're getting set now for the start of the third period. Here is Larry Nance, who, as you saw, won the slam dunk championship, and that's his trophy. Sitting there with his trophy, Tom. Well, what do you think he was going to do? Put it in his pocket? I don't know. He's got big pockets, and that's a big trophy. Larry Nance of Phoenix, and he is a star to watch in the NBA. I'm sure he's got that $10,000 in his pocket. Speaking of thousands of dollars, each winner of this all-star team will receive $2,000, and the losing team a 1000 So they're not in it for the money, but we saw a lot of that pride in the first half, particularly from Magic Johnson. Underway in the third period. The starting five in the ball game for the East is out there now, and Robert Parrish makes the second one count. Right off the get-go, they try to go inside, and it's successful. They'll try and climb back and maybe be a little bit more selective on their fast breaks, the East, and then go to the power game inside. Same five has started for the West also in there. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who scores there, along with Adrian Danley. Alex English, George Gervin, and Magic Johnson. And it's 78 to 64. The East had the early lead. An eight-point lead at 12 to 4, but Magic brought him back. Biggest lead for the West, 17 points. Here's Moncrief inside. Too much traffic with Kareem and Gervin. And here's Magic Johnson. Julius trying to stay with him. Pass inside to AD Adrian Dadley. And Larry Bird gets the rebound. Julius. Bird. Basket counts and a foul on the East coming back here early in the third. They're trying to storm it up the court. Be very selective on the fast break. That time Larry Bird had a clear alley to the basket and uh, Dr. J made it happen. Larry Bird. He is the blue-collar work ethic, along, I guess, with Rulin. He was the MVP two years ago. He's eighth in the league, averaging over 23 a game. He leads the Celtics in assists and steals, and he's the second-best free-throw percentage in the NBA at 88%. I think he's got the, one of the greatest personalities to play to have as a teammate. Quiet, unassuming, doesn't really look for the, uh, the glamour and the limelight, and I think his teammates love it. Driving his Gervin to the hoop. Kareem. And a 10-footer for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Has 14 points and is the high scorer for the West. He has hit six in a row now. Julius looking inside for Berg. Berg gets position. Flips back off of Paris. Danley had it and he was fouled by Julius Irving. And that's the second foul of this six. second hand. So for Irving, that is his second personal foul. And the first team foul for the East. Minute and a half gone by in this third period. Adrian Danley going to the hoop is rejected inside. That get by me, says Dr. J. And Isaiah Thomas comes back and hits the jumper. So Thomas gets the first point, and only Otis Birdsong and Bill Lane Beer of these All-Stars have not scored. Everyone on the West team has scored a point or more in the game. That was the first basket of the ball game for Thomas. And we have a lot of holding foul so far. The foul on number six, Julius Irving. Julius Irving's third. Here's Kareem. Uh, by Dr. J. You watch Dr. J come right in there and swat it away. So a uh, little defense being played here. Dantley. Parrish out to Thomas. A four on three with Isaiah Thomas. 
Moncrief. Sidney Moncrief inside. They had a four on three that time, and they're starting to push it up and make it happen. The East. Bird steals it. And getting it right back is Alex English. Does he have a sweet shot, Alex, Alex English? One of the best pure jump shooters I've seen for a big guy. Six for six from the field for English. Irving, after Thomas is missed, draws the foul. So the East had drawn to within nine points after trailing by 14 at the half. It is now back to 11, and with the personal foul on Kareem, that's his third personal foul. The East will have a chance to knock it down to nine. Frank Layden. An Irishman from Brooklyn, New York, the general manager and coach of the Utah Jazz. And a big, fat contract ahead of him. He's done a great job in this game, particularly. Julius Irving has the best average among all-star game scoring leaders, and the other four, Oscar Robertson, Bob Pettit, Elgin Baylor, and George Mikan, are all here. Mikan, of course, the honorary captain for the West. Elgin Baylor did not play because of an Achilles injury in the old-timers game, but Robertson and Pettit did. And Julius Irving, who's the high scorer today with 17 points, will be going to the line to try to increase his lead. The home of the Denver Nuggets and Carl Shear, the vice president and general manager of this franchise, has put together a tremendous all-star weekend show and you saw in Pat O'Brien's halftime report the packed house yesterday of 17,000 plus and of course the sellout today. You know they had more people apply for press credentials to cover this weekend than ever in all-star history and that includes cities like Los Angeles and New York. That's quite a compliment to this Nugget organization. No question. Of course next year's all-star game will be held at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis and we can expect the same kind of hospitality and they have the all, they have the all timers game baby. I'm going to really work to get in shape. Tommy, one every five years enough for you, don't you think? I think I think so. I was worried about you for a while. Kareem with the sky hook. That's until you got that assist that they didn't give you. Boy, I hope they got that on tape so I can take it home with me. I think the tape went blank at that time. That was the, <laughs> my only uh, assist in my career. 11-point lead for the West. Julius Irving working against Adrian Danley has a shot blocked by Gerber. Julius again, seven seconds on the shot clock. Isaiah Thomas hands it from outside. So it's a nine-point game again. And here's Magic pushing it up. Out of bounds. It's going to be turned over to the East. You'll see a great move by Dr. J, but Gervin, the Iceman, icing him down. All right, Isaiah Thomas now in a setup offense, working against Magic Johnson, who's 6'9". He's got about eight inches on Isaiah. Julius Irving has Parrish for a screen, fighting through his Danley. Good defense by Danley. Four seconds on the clock. Bird fires it up. Parrish, new clock. Out of bounds. No, oh, still inbounds. And now they stepped on the line, so it'll be West Ball. A little sloppy inside for the moment. And here comes Magic Johnson, who has 13 assists in the game. Feeds Alex English, blocked out of bounds. Well, they said this would be all offense. We're seeing all defense. Block shots galore here. Well, last year, we saw great passing in defense. And I think that what we have here, a lot of players, everyone thinks they all want to shoot and score. I think they want to impress their peers that they can pass to. And also play that good D. Kareem against Paris. Left-handed skyhook. When he moves to the hoop with that move, he's unstoppable. It really requires team defense to try and turn Jabbar off. 18 points for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He's hit eight of his last nine shots. He scored 20 in a losing cause for the West last year. Moncrief double-teamed inside. Paris lost it. And they're going to call a loose ball foul. It'll be against Adrian Dantley, and that will be the 13th foul. And second personal against Adrian Dantley with an 11-point West lead. They have been in the lead since the early East 12-4 margin. Biggest margin was 17 points. The West trying to play a little bit more team defense than uh, perhaps the East. Magic Johnson, did he get Thomas from behind? And Earl Strom says he did. And so that'll be the second foul on number 32. Well, right now, the West is uh, taking advantage of any time the ball going down inside as they're looking at Mark McGuire. They're going to double down and try and take the ball out of the hands of the big people down low of the East. And it's been effective the last couple of trips. Isaiah Thomas 
And so along with Mark Aguirre coming in for the West, Bernard King comes in for Larry Bird of the East. Bird goes to the bench. He has scored 12 points. Thomas's smile is so infectious. He was just happy to be at the line, I think. He's averaged over 10 assists this year, two and a half steal. And a foul with 7.22 to go in the third period. I believe that foul is on Sidney Moncrief, and that's number three on Sidney Moncrief. And so George Gervin will go to the line. The East is trailing by 14 at the half. They've made some headway here in the third period, but still trail by nine. Now it's 10. Well, Gervin is one of the more difficult guards to defend against in the NBA. 6'7". He's got the good outside shot, and you really, really, when he gets his hands on the ball, have difficulty trying to take that jump shot away from him. Kevin McHale comes in for Robert Parrish, who has 10 points and 13 rebounds. So Parrish is doing the job as a starter. Moses Malone, of course, injured, unable to play. Well, here's where the East team could lose the battle of the boards. With Parrish being out, he's been doing a real credible job on the offense and defensive board. Thomas hits the jump shot. Isaiah Thomas, who was scoreless at halftime, now has eight points on four field goals. They're coming back. Magic Johnson inside. Aguirre loses it to the doctor. Four on three. And Julius is fouled, so a chance now for the East to come within seven points with just under seven minutes to go in the third period. And now Frank Layden says, I'm going to get a playmaker and scrappy defender of my own in the game. So Ricky Green will be coming back in the ball game for the West. Ricky Green has scored two points, but he's been quite a playmaker with eight assists in the game and will be back. Pat O'Brien here with outgoing commissioner of the NBA, Larry O'Brien, and what a great game for your last game. A great game, and it's the tradition of all-star games, as you know, the NBA. Fantastic players, the greatest in the world, and here we are enjoying them thoroughly. And all the, all the comments about you, the one thing that's been left out is what you're going to do next. What are you going to do? I haven't made a firm decision, Pat, but uh, I will very shortly. And the people suggest a lot of things to me, but they're supposed to be well-meaning friends, and I'm too sure they're well-meaning. I think, the, think a lot about all of this. Congratulations Thank on great you, contributions Pat. to the game. Thank Back you. to you, Dick. Tommy, he's been a terrific commissioner. The game has blossomed under his administration. It was in serious trouble. It's come on to where I think it's ready to be the sport of the 80s that they hoped it would be in the 70s. He does leave, as you said, uh, the game much better shape than when he came. had a lot of problems when he came in merger expansion player problems antitrust actions solved that in a great conciliatory way as a great compromiser and really had done an outstanding job the next guy coming in has got a tough act to follow and he's got good credentials David Stern who will take over this week Julia serving this is the first free throw so Ricky Green is in in the backcourt for the West, along with George Gervin. It is now an eight-point game with just under seven minutes to play, 88-80. to 80. Ricky Green looked good with eight assists, as we said. Got in the Utah Jazz, the surprise team. The third best record in the NBA of Boston and Philadelphia. Well, they're trying to help out on Kareem as much as they possibly can. There it is. They're gonna... And there's Ricky Green outside hitting the jumper. So Ricky Green now with only a second basket, but he has made things happen every time he's come in the game now, and it's 90-80 to 80 with 6.34 remaining in the third period. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn here in Denver, Colorado. Game taking a slower form right now. They're trying to set it up a little bit more than the fast break. Thomas with a jumper, and he has been red hot in the second half with 10 points on five field goals, and once again, the East is coming close. They're eight points down, and Thomas saves it to Sidney Moncrease and a chance to draw to six points. But Sidney Moncrief is a lot of things, but a magician he's not. They say some of those Denver players don't play defense. Alex English forced the walk. Jack Sigma is going to come in. Otis Birdsaw, one of two players who hasn't scored in the game from the New Jersey Nets. He comes in the ball game. Jack Sigma comes in and Ralph Sampson. So they're going to go with the Redwood Trees now, Frank Layden is, and take advantage of what could be a big deficit for the East rebounding wise. Sigma with the curly hair. Illinois Wesleyan. 
This is the shot, gets his own rebound and scores. That's a tough matchup for Dr. J because he can't get at the shot. Turned Sigma loose on the board so he can get his own missed shot. Ten point lead, 5.45 to go. Biggest lead was 17 by the West at 70 to 53. Birdsong picked up nicely by Mark Wire. Notice Birdsong off the rim. Birdsong double team finds King. King, Irving. Julius from King. Oh, yes. Aguirre. Creativity. Why do people say that these are the greatest athletes in the game? Just look at any one of these plays, right? Watch this play here. Drop down. He's corralled in there by three white jerseys. Finds a nice way to get it up and in. Wasn't that beautiful? Julius Serbi goes out of the game. He has scored 22 points and is the game high scorer. Kareem has 18 for the West, and here is... Ruland in the ball game. Jeff Ruland from the Washington Bullets, who have been struggling so far in the Atlantic Division in last place. Did you take a look at that grim face of Jeff Ruland? How'd you like to meet him in a dark alley? Wouldn't even want to sit next to him at the banquet last night. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. He is huge. Nine point lead, 93 to 84, 520 to go. McGuire has 11 in the game now. Isaiah Thomas and Ricky Green matched up. Former Big Ten stars, Thomas from Indiana, Ricky Green from Michigan. Rebound, Ralph Sampson. And they went at it in the NCAA championship a few years ago. Ricky Green, no good, Aguirre. Out of bounds, East Ball, and a chance now to narrow the lead to seven. And Aguirre comes out like a fullback. There's Andrew Tony back in the ball game, so they want some scoring right now. And Andrew could very well give it to him. Uh, he's great, fast break, as you see Isaiah sitting down, but they need to get the fast break going, make good hoops on that end of it, and also if they don't, get some set offense going. 20-second timeout called for by Casey Jones. Julius Irving has 22 points, Larry Bird 12, Parrish and Isaiah Thomas 10, all of Thomas's points in the second half. Kareem is the leading scorer for the West with 18. Behind him is Alex English with 13, Mark Aguirre 11, and George Gervin, nine. Well, Kareem, very much a factor here in all kinds of ways, but that inside game against Robert Parrish uh, has produced some strong offensive uh, points, rolls to the hoop, and they're not, because the East is not got that real team got defensive concept to uh, double down on Kareem. That's turning him loose a little bit more than normally happens during a regular season. Under five minutes to go, third period. Nine-point lead, 93-84. Jeff Rulin inside. A lot of Beef inside with Sigma, and it's out of bounds. Good defense by Jack Sigma. Boy, he had him underneath the basket. No place for Ruland to go, but jump back into Ralph Sampson. How'd you like to face that? Gervin working against, and with the help of the Sampson pick, coming around to Aguirre. Bernard King defending Aguirre. Loose ball. Sigma comes up with it. He has played a game that won't always be shown in the box score at the end. That was Mark Aguirre with his 13th point, but Sigma is really causing a lot of commotion inside at both ends. Mikhail turnaround, and he's fouled. But the East losing the uh, battle of the boards right now. Sigma and Ralph Sampson and Aguirre matched up against the Ruland, Mikhail, and the Bernard King. That's where the problem lies right now. Jim Paxson replaces George Gervin. So a scorer goes out, and George Gervin, who has scored nine points and Paxson as we said works well without the ball a really heady player for Portland in there I used to play against his dad play for the Cincinnati Royals and a uh, fine player and I think he took that youngster when he was a little kid and taught him how to move without the ball because that's what his dad used to do so well of course Jim Paxson's brother John rookie with the San Antonio Spurs a team that was struggling early they've come back they got the sixth best record now in the Western Conference traveling call. The West has held the lead. It was 14 at the half. It's now 95-86. Four minutes to go in the period. Bernard King. Smooth jumper by Bernard King. Once a comeback player of the year at Golden State. Mark Aguirre putting on the show. Follow up. And McHale clears it. And here's Kevin McHale showing he can handle the ball. The King to McHale inside. Ah. They battle for it. Paxson. Ruling. 
Open Birdsong tipped up and in by Bernard King. And King is triggering this comeback by the East. A five-point game now with 3.25 to go. And here comes Birdsong. Green is back. So is King. Follow up. McHale. And it's a 95 to 92 ball game. And Kevin McHale's got a little bit to do with this comeback himself. Timeout, and the East is aroused right now. It's a three point ball game. The East is coming back. We'll be back. Division, the defending world champion Philadelphia 76ers trail the Boston Celtics by five games, and Philadelphia has a lot to make up. And two weeks from today, at 3.30 Eastern Time, one of the classic rivalries in sports continues as the 76ers travel to the Boston Garden to face the Celtics. You'll see them all, the doctor, Moses Malone, and the rest of the defending champions against Larry Bird and the Celtics. And it seems like every game they play goes down to the wire, Tommy. Boy, it's a war when they play each other. There's an intense rivalry that goes on there. The Celtics can be up by five games, but Philadelphia doesn't believe it. And that's in two weeks. Philly in Boston, 3.30 Eastern Time. Tommy and I will be there. Kiki Mandaway. That'll be a great one. Inbounds to Sigma. Ten seconds on the shot clock. West ball. 2.56 remaining. Well, the uh, West right now trying to set up their own inside game a little bit. They've got Ralph Sampson down there and uh, being guarded by Ruland, but there's the Ricky Green hits the jump shot. The bomb. Six points for Ricky Green just about at that three-point line. And a five-point lead for the West just when they needed it the most. Inside Bernard King. Ah. Rebound. Ralph Sampson. Outlet pass to Ricky Green. McHale in front of him. Ricky Green again. I got you. And ruling out to Otis Birdsong. And we're seeing end-to-end -end fast break basketball right now. Bernard King goes oh! the baseline. Basket counts and a foul. And Ralph Sampson's got to be saying, what can I do to stop that? And that brought Larry Bird straight off the bench. What a great play by Bernard King. It goes up quickly. And watch the blow that Sampson lays on Bernard King. He takes it and kisses it off the glass as nice as can be. The fourth personal foul on Sampson. King missed the free throw, so it's still a three-point game, and Ricky Green stepped on the line, and the East can narrow it to one now, as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar comes back in the ball game. He has 18 and is the leading scorer for the West. Ralph Sampson sits down with four personals. Well, Sampson played rather well in there. He's played well in his first appearance in his first year. He had to drive a little bit too hard. The tail over Kareem. Ruling that a loose ball foul will be charged against the Eastern All-Stars. Two blocks of granite. Look at the grimace of uh, Larry Bird. You don't think these guys want to win the game? Well, There's your answer, baby. I think it's like anything else. I think they have a lot of fun. They enjoyed watching you guys play yesterday in the slam dunkers. But when they toss it up on the day of the game, what else do you want to do? Your old coach, Red Auerbach, how badly did he want to win yesterday? I wouldn't believe it. He was putting plays on the blackboard to win that old-timers game. But what really was interesting in the locker room today before these ball games was the intensity that you see. I coached a few of these all-star games, and when that door closes and the press is outside, it's all business. How are we going to beat the other team? And it's meaningful. Rulin had committed the foul, of course, and Sigma made good on his first free throw. Jack Sigma, one of the last vestiges of Seattle's championship team, certainly the last of the great front line. Here are the old timers. There's Hal Greer in the middle to push it to the right. Havlicek and Alex Hannum with the glasses the perched on the top of his head. He's a big favorite in Denver. He coached the Western old timers. Two minutes to go, and we have a pushing foul. 159, so they'll go to the line and shoot two. Very 
interesting to me, Dick, that when the East is looking for an inside game, they're going to Bernard King. They must feel they have a mismatch situation there, or somebody can't guard Bernard King. Normally you'd think they might go to Ruin or Kevin McHale, but they're going to Bernard King. And he can do it inside. And away foul them, and Bernard misses the free throw. There's Johnny Kerr, and behind him, the great Oscar Robertson. Johnny Kerr let me get a shot off yesterday. Thank you very much, Johnny Kerr. You guys won the Hefty Award. Yeah, we won the Hefty Award. Pudgy, pudgy man of the year. Girl, come around, Paxson looking for Kareem. Ruling. Banging inside. Paxson fires it up. Sigma. Second effort. Sigma again. 101-95 with 140 to go. The West does not want to relinquish this lead. No question about it. Well, the East can't afford to give up that uh, offensive board that easily. McHale double teamed by Green and Sigma, and stolen by Sigma. Here's Ricky Green. Paxson. Paxson. Well, that was a beautiful shot by Paxson. He had a glide by Andrew Tony and laid in lefty. Not an easy shot. They closed it to three, the East, and now it's an eight-point game again. And Kareem may be hit with a foul. Let's see if it if it is, it's number four. And it is number four on Abdul Jabbar. So Ralph Sampson is on the bench with four. Kareem has four. How'd you like to be coaching a team for a full season? And if uh, Kareem went down. Uh, six personal fouls, your substitute would be Ralph Sampson. Or Jack Sigler. Or Jack Sigler. Wow. Bill Lame Beer comes back in the ball game replacing Kevin McHale. Lame Beer. And that's an effort by Casey Jones to get uh, control, a little bit better control of the uh, rebounding department as uh, McHale has given up a lot of uh, strength on Jabbar. Rulin, who's a new daddy, his daughter Courtney Ann is a week old, and he is a proud father, and he cans the free throw, so it's 103 to 97. Ralph Sampson getting set to come back in. You saw Kiki Vandaway. What a great front line the Denver Nuggets have with this old Vandaway in English. They can shoot it inside and shoot it outside. Tony driving, lame beer. Tapped out by from Kareem to Paxson to Ricky Green. And Bernard King the rebound. Otis Birdsong defending Green in one end. And Otis Birdsong taking a shot at the other end. Birdsong. What play. This is a big game for Otis Birdsong too, isn't it? Coming off of the injury in two tough years. He wants to prove that he's back. He's made a dramatic comeback after a stress fracture of the pelvis last year. And Jim Paxson in double figures with 10 for the West. 107.99, 10 seconds to go. In the third period, the East cut it to three. But the West is opening up again to an eight-point lead. 107.99. And with one second to go, that'll do it in the third period. So we have completed three periods in the 34th annual All-Star Game. It's 107.99 the West. And we'll return to McNichols Arena after this word from your local station. Beautiful state, Colorado, and a progressive city, Denver, the host of the 34th All-Star Game. The West leads 107.99. We start the fourth period. Dick Stockton with Tom Heinsohn. Keep in mind that the East has won four straight games. No one has ever won five in a row. The West wants to break it, and we're going to get down to crunch time in this one. Yeah, a lot of strategy going to start to develop here in this fourth quarter as we see Magic Johnson back in the ball game. They're going to have their best ball handlers try and keep the fast break going the way they did prior. And if they don't, go to the inside. The strategy maker, Frank Layton, sitting on the bench. Sigma against Lane Beer, fall away shot. So Jack Sigma starts out with Ralph Sampson, Kiki Vandaway, Magic Johnson, and Walter Davis. Andrew Tony and Otis Birdsong are in the backcourt for the East. Bill Lane Beer, Bernard King, and Jeff Rulin. And a foul. Right off the top here, a personal foul on Jack Sigma, his third. And ruling as he will, got by Sigma, but saw, guess who? Ralph Sampson. All oh, right, here's oh, Kelly oh, Trebuca oh, and Isaiah oh, Thomas oh, coming oh, back oh, in. Oh, so once again, we have three Detroit Pistons in there. Trebuca, oh, Thomas, oh, and Lee Beer. The combinations you were talking yeah, about. Trying with to have a little cohesiveness in the offense. Hey, uh, King misses the shot. Sigma, the rebound. Walter Davis to Kiki Vandaway. 
And out of the pack comes Isaiah Thomas, four on one. It's Bernard King with a stuff on the drive. Well, he's been playing some kind of game, uh, Bernard King. He's got 18 points, Tom, and Julius still leads all scores with 22. Kareem has 18 for the West. McGuire in English, 13. Walter Davis, no good. Rebound Lane Beer. Nearly two minutes gone by in the final period. An eight-point lead for the West. Isaiah Thomas, he has been blistering hot in the second half. He has 12 points in the game, all in the second. Losing it. Nope, not quite. It's still West ball, Thomas. With Magic and Isaiah in there, they're still going to try and fast break as much as possible. Here's Ralph Sampson. Ah! And here's Isaiah Thomas running ahead of the ball for a moment. He's trying to lead the comeback with King, Lavier, and it's now 109-105, a four-point game, and the closest the East has come was in the third period when they got to within three. It's getting down to that crunch time. Walter Davis firing away and hitting. I'll tell you, the West All-Stars, with most of the big scorers, have been hitting the outside shot in the second half. That makes any set offense very interesting. The East are going to try and do it with the fast break here in this fourth quarter. Rulin, Lambeer, two in a row for Bill Lambeer, who played in Italy four years ago, went from Cleveland to Detroit, now has a home in Detroit. Sigma, Sampson, and they'll call a jump ball. Rulin ties up Sampson. Well, Rulin may not have gotten the rebound, but he surrounded Ralph Sampson. I wonder who's going to get this tip. Well, the East. The Puka. Foul. Nope. He's fouled. The crowd thought he had traveled. And they don't like the call. Trapuca is fouled by Magic Johnson, number three on Johnson. And a timeout. This is really strategy time for both these coaches to try and win this game. 9.40 remaining in the fourth period. The West is up by four. The playoffs have been expanded from six to eight teams in each conference, and the first round is now at best three out of five. And if the season were to end today in the Eastern Conference, this would be the lineup. And the first four teams, Boston, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, and the New York Knicks would have the home court for that first round, and these would be the eight teams. In the West, the story, Utah, Dallas, L.A., Portland. And with Utah and Dallas looking so good, you want to talk about parity, the NBA has it. Teams aren't going from mediocrity or from being a poor team to mediocrity. They're going to be solid teams here. Absolutely, and the guy responsible again for that, to develop that parity, Larry O'Brien, who's leaving today. Dick, this is the key part of the All-Star game. It's now transferred from a player's game to more of a coach's game. Team fouls, two on the west, none on the east, and a turnover. East can't afford too many of those here in the final period. And that's where I thought he'd be in there for the MVP, making a few of those. A key fast break by Sampson. Well, he may have heard you, and he may be saving his best for last. Huh? <laughs> Out to Thomas. Thomas. Oh! He continues to shoot the lights out of that basket. He has 14 points. He has hit his last five, and all of them in the second half. Winding down to nine minutes to go. Sampson against Rulin. Here's Ralph again. And the rebound is by Bill Lane Beard and Thomas. There are three members of the Pistons, plus Bernard King of the Knicks and Ruland of the Bullets. Here's Ruland of the Bullets. Beautiful lay down by Isaiah Thomas on the penetration and Ruland with a tough shot. Not an easy one to make at all. 113 to 111. The West trying to hold on here with a two-point lead. And Magic, who's not the most effective outside shooter misses out there here's ralph again look at magic johnson's eyes waiting for ralph sampson to uncover and boy does he make a stuff or what here's isaiah the penetration the entire defense adjusts there's the working man player ruling up and under and julius serving is back in the lineup he replaces jeff ruling the doctor double teamed at the baseline thomas is hot this is a three-point attempt and Kiki Vandaway the rebound. It'll be West ball, and this is the closest the East has come since the West led late in the first period, 32 to 31. 
The reason I say it's the coach's part of the game now, they've called some things that they may try to go to in the last time out. And let's see what they do. Walter Davis coming off the screen. And Julia serving. The East can tie it up. We have had only one tie in the game. They do. Lambeer. Great pass. Isaiah Thomas, brilliant pass. And Lambeer knows when to be available for the pass. That's the beauty of playing with a guy like uh, Isaiah. He's using that combination right now. Isaiah's got 12 assists in the ball game, and we have a tie, second tie of the game. And Lambeer to Julius. Julius. What can you say? I mean, this is a Western crowd, and they're up on their feet here in that play, play by Dr. J. And the East has taken the lead. They've come from 17 points behind. And Waller Davis says, wait a second. Tie again with 7.09 to play. We're at 115. Isaiah all the way. Isaiah Thomas. Well, they're steaming right at the West. The fast break. Isaiah pushing it up, making it happen now. Under seven minutes to go. 117, 115 the East. And the Pistons have made it happen. But Vandaway ties it up again. Out of bounds. The West has it. And there's an instance of not playing together with each other. Isaiah thought King was going to go to the hoop. If he had, he probably would have given a great pass. There's Isaiah on the move. Pushing it up before the defense really gets set. Everybody's retreating. Swoops by everybody. And that is great basketball. This is the All-Star Game, friends. By the best. Timeout. 6.44 remain. And we're tied. Be the champion Curry against the undefeated challenger Costello coming up right after the game on CBS Sports Sunday. This is a Westing crowd. They're rooting for the West, but all of a sudden they're rooting for the East after that. What a play by Dr. J. And then Isaiah Thomas, of course, on the penetration. Kareem Abdul Jabbar and Adrian Danley back in the ball game. Alex English and Green and Davis in the backcourt. There you are, the leading scorers. The bar now offers a lot of good offensive potential. They go right to him. Air ball. Bird. Bird is in there with Julius, Thomas, Moncrief, and Lane Beer. Lane Beer's done a good job as the third center here. Sure and has. Here's Lane Beer. It drops. And he is dynamite from out 15 feet. The Detroit connection doing it again. He's second in the league in rebounding. He's behind Moses Malone. That's rebounding average at over 12 and a half. English with a screen from Kareem. And Moncrief goes up high. The East with a lead up two with six minutes to go in the game. Bird pulls up on the baseline. Lane Beer fights again. Foul. Basket counts. And what about Bill Lane Beer today? They may have brought him out from Detroit after Moses got hurt, but they're not saying uh, we're sorry we did it. They're totally thankful that Lambeer is here today, though, that Eastern squad. Keep in mind that Isaiah Thomas in this Bill half has 16 Bill points Bill and five Bill assists. Ball. Well, when you're playing with some of your teammates, it makes it a lot easier for the cohesiveness of the offensive in an all-star game. And Lambier has really responded very, very nicely in this ball game. Come in, made some fast break hoops, rebounded real well, and hit a key outside shot. He has hit 11 points in this period alone for Bill Lambier. Ricky Green misses, and Moncrief leads a fast break. Julius. Moncrief. Julius says, I'll pick it up, the loose ball. It's still East Ball. Lane Beer, in the period you say is the big period in this game, has 11 points. So in crunch time, he's doing it as Lane brings in some reserves. Yeah, you never would have expected it, but he did it, Lane Beer. We're looking at the West answer right now to come back with Magic Johnson and Paxson, who move well without the ball. 5.36 remaining. Fourth period. Lane Beer gets away inside. Boy, it's 13 in this half. Smart play to shake Lane Beer loose. A nice heads-up pass by Bird. And it's seven-point lead now. 124-117. And the East has blown away from the West here in this fourth period. Uh, Lam Lane Beer guarding uh, Jabbar. The instructions, I think, from the bench is get it into Jabbar. Watch the contact 
the physical part of any game, Lambeer takes a header. <laughs> Ooh, that hurts. The East has scored seven in a row, Tom. They've outscored the West 25 to 10 in this period. 13 by Bill Lambeer. Well, there's a sky hook, and that'll bring him back. Well, they're going to try and get it into Jabbar. They feel they can get the shot off against Lambeer. It's not known as a real leaper, but Lambeer is making Jabbar work up the other end. Kareem has 20 now. Leading score for the West. Isaiah Thomas looking inside. Five minutes to go. 5-0-1. Foul. Interesting, Lambeer is at the head of the key taking Jabbar, the biggest man on the East team, on the West team rather, out of the underneath defense position. So the, the West ha East has many opportunities to score inside if they use that strategy. Dantley's foul, his third and the fourth team foul for the West. Bird misses. Julius saves. One team foul on the East with under five minutes to go. Magic Johnson has broken the all-star game assist record. He's got 17. And Larry Bird will go to the line. Magic Johnson, Tommy, last year had 16 assists. He's got 17 in this game. Just gets better and better. When he plays the game, you know, these other all-star players, you can see how dejected he is right now to be down by uh, this five-point margin, maybe six or seven. But... Uh, Magic Johnson with that 17 assist has really done an outstanding job. But the players are all fans of Magic Johnson. They want to re remember being at the tail end of a Ma Magic Johnson assist on a fast break. They love it. Larry Bird with the free throws after Dantley's fourth personal foul and 15th foul on the West. They're in the penalty. Seven-point lead for the West. Dantley in the crowd. Jump all. He was tied up and... Look at that little dance by Isaiah Thomas. He's got the moves. Watch this little reaction here by Mr. Thomas. Oh, baby, you must have been watching the gorilla out here. Kareem claims a foul. Thomas behind his back to Moncrief. And we're going to have another two. Oh, oh. Magic Johnson super play had three on one and broke it down. Great defense by Magic Johnson. Jump ball. Watch it happening here. Three on one. Magic's got them all. He makes them make the bad pass. And a little jump ball situation. He had those feet moving. Julia serving. And Julia serving. The high score in the game is 26 points. And the East is shooting over 75% in this fourth period. They lead now, 128-119. Biggest lead of the ball game for the East. Sigma foul going in. The East had an early lead of eight points at 12 to four. The West then came back and led most of the way, leading by 17 points at one time, and the East stormed back. They came within three. They were down by eight after three period, and then forged in front. And with 4.04 to go, the East calls a timeout. Right now, the uh, West has got to get it together to make a quick comeback as far as they can do it. Many of the great wars in pro basketball have been fought between these two teams, Philly and Boston, and they'll hook up again in two weeks. Two weeks from today, 3.30 Eastern on CBS, and these two will be... On opposite ends for that one, Tom. Larry Bird and Dr. J, and both of them are something to see. And this rivalry has been going on so long, I can't remember how long. Will Chamberlain, I can remember uh, playing against uh, some of those Philly teams, and it hasn't ceased one bit. Here's Jack Sigma on the line. At halftime, the West surprisingly held their own rebounding-wise. They were 25-25, but in the second half, the East has opened up their domination inside with a 14-rebound advantage over the West. Well, I think Ruland, McHale, and uh, particularly Lambeer have added to those totals and has ha helped create this real lead that the East is enjoying right now. It is never easy to pick a most valuable player in this game because there are a lot of different elements Start. to the game, and it isn't always the high score. Julius Irving happens to be the high score with 26. 
and he won it last year. He's won it before, and he's a hot candidate tonight, too. There's Isaiah, there's Lambeer, there's Bernard King. All possibilities for the East. Magic Johnson, a possibility for the West. Jabbar, you pick it. I don't know. I can't even tell yet. Well, we're all going to pick it, though. And we'll find out. Sigma, guarded by Bird. Nine-point lead and a steal by Moncrief. And you can just feel the air coming out of the West All-Stars balloon right now. Lane Beer doesn't make it. Kareem the rebound. And the West trying to break a four-game losing streak. Looked like they may be on to a good thing for most of this game, but all of a sudden it evaporated here in the fourth period. And they're still coming at him, Isaiah. If we got it, we're going to take it. Thomas guarded by Paxson. Lane Beer, in fact, the Detroit connection, as you mentioned. They pulled it back out. They had a three on two and said, no, let's get something a little bit more solid than that. Julius and Kareem. And it was blocked inside. I think Magic got a hand on it. Under three minutes now. Kiki Vandaway. Baseline. They're going to need his scoring down the stretch. Outside scoring and also perhaps to get the ball at Jabbar to climb back into it. But uh, here's Isaiah walking it up. So they've got lots of people to go to. The guy that's been hot has been Lambeer. Isaiah Thomas has 16 points all in the second half, plus tremendous playmaking today. Lambeer with three seconds on the clock. Thomas looks. He fires. Sigma. Seven-point lead for the East. Here's Vandaway again. And Vandaway bringing the West back. Kiki Vandaway with 14. As a guy that knows where to get and how to get open with a great ball handle like Magic Johnson. Averaging 29 on the year. And we're winding down now to two minutes to go. In the fourth period of the 34th All-Star Game. 130 to 125. The doctor tipped up by Lambeer. And it's a foul on Lambeer. Well, Lambeer might have been happy he was here on Friday, but he's certainly very happy he made the trip because he plays super basketball, even though he got that offensive foul. And we have a timeout. Frank Layton's team is five behind with 1.53 to go. There's plenty to, of time. Good. Casey Jones knows it as well as anyone. At the conclusion of today's All-Star Game, Tom Heinsohn and I will be selecting the Miller Highlight Most Valuable Player of the Game. In conjunction with this award, Miller will present a check for $2,000 to the Special Olympics in that player's name. It's up in the air, Tom. Well, I'll tell you, I wouldn't know who to pick right now. Lambeer has made a great contribution. Isaiah Thomas and uh, Trapuca came in and sparked with that Detroit connection from the Motor City. And they motored right through the uh, West team for significant contributions. Uh, Bernard King has been solid. Spectacular has been uh, Dr. J. Kareem has been a scoring machine. Magic has broken the assist record. Well, wow, what a pick. Yeah. This is a great show and a great competitive battle. The East had won four in a row from 63 to 66, trying to make it five straight. Kiki Vandaway has hit two in a row. And we'll have a foul against Lane Beer. He was holding Kareem inside. Well, if you don't get that good pop-out stuff, look back into the inside guy and there's Kareem. There's Lane Beer laying muscle on Kareem. Lots of muscle on Kareem. And the whistle did blow. That's the fifth team foul, so it's the penalty and Kareem is shooting two. Kareem, leading scorer for the West, 21 points today. This is 13th All-Star appearance, higher record. He was selected for a 14th back in 73, but was injured and didn't play. Well, it's still anybody's ball game. Sure is. Four-point game, 135 remaining. Isaiah Thomas guarded by Ricky Green. And they're going to call the West little strategy move here by the uh, East team. Lambeer with that good outside shooting is pulling Kareem out. It allows Doc to perhaps, perhaps isolate somebody inside, and that's what the East has been trying to do, is get Doc one-on-one -on -one down low. Julius with two. Now going for his 28th point of the game. He was the MVP last year. He had also won the Most Valuable Player Award. 
in 1977. Bob Pettit won three, shared another time. Oscar Robertson won three, Bob Cousy won two. Those are the multiple MVP award winners. Six point lead, Magic Johnson feeds the Sigma. And it's a four point game again. 132 to 128, 118 to go. Julius to Larry Bird. They're gonna use the clock. They sure were, and Bird really had a chance to uh, get an outside shot, thought better of it. 105 and nine on the shot clock. Julius Irving against Kiki Vandaway. Julius Irving misses. Kareem the rebound. Can they cut it to two? Here's Magic. And it's thrown away. Let's see, it was deflected. And it's going to be West Ball. It's West Ball. Now that was a break, I believe, for the West as uh, they really intimidated Magic to throw it away. I don't think anybody really nicked it. And Casey doesn't like it. He wants a timeout and he's going to get it right here. We're going to see the deflection, they tell me. And Dr. J just nicked it. So a timeout called for by Casey Jones with under a minute to go and a four-point lead for the East. Quite a bill affair coming up right after the game on CBS Sports Sunday highlighted by the WBC Super Lightweight Championship fight. Julius Irving has 28 points in the game. He's the high scorer, and that's the most points in an all-star game since George Gervin scored 34 four years ago. That's impressive, but Lambeer has been impressive. Isaiah Thomas has been impressive, and somebody better be impressive for the West. Sigma, he's been impressive today. He sure has. On the follow-up, and it's a two-point game. The West has three timeouts plus a 20. They've got plenty of time there. Thomas against Green. Bird, top of the key. Kareem the rebound. The West can tie it up. Magic Johnson. He does it. He does it. Well, the East are going to end up with the last shot. There are two seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Timeout. Listen to him. Oh, they love it. This game is all great basketball. Here's Magic coming into it. And puts up super move and ties it up. And don't forget, he's got 19 assists as well. Coming out of the wire, folks. West has outscored the East 11 to 2 after they were down by 9 and now the East with 20 seconds to go and 19 on the shot clock working out a play that they hope will win it for them. Well they've got various places to go. Robert Parrish back in the ball game that might be a place to go inside. Lambeer uh, in there a fine outside shooter a big guy will have to play him so uh, they got Larry Bird and Dr. J. A lot of rebounders. It's Thomas and Irving and three big guys. 13 seconds. Tie game at 132. Bird fakes. Fires it up. Four seconds to go. Here's Magic Johnson. Fires it up. Overtime. Overtime. Isn't this something? It is absolutely fantastic. Magic Johnson so sorry with himself that he didn't put in that bomb from the three-point land, but it's going into overtime, gang. Look at him. Fired it away. Look at this. And we're going to see a coach in agony. Oh, 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 what do I do? Uh, All right. Okay. Isn't he great? He's terrific. Right now, before we go to the five-minute overtime period, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Overtime. Right now, let's try to go to the Western Huddle in Frank Lake. Let's start the stack again. Work hard. Let's run. Let's run. Let's run the floor, okay? That's where we let up. That's what hurt us in the third quarter. We stopped running, okay? Let's keep after them. They're down. We got momentum. Let's go. Let's go. They sure do, Tommy. They got momentum. 
They've got momentum, they've got Jabbar, they got Magic Johnson, and they got some other people there too that can do some damage. What a game this is. The East, the early lead, and the West by 17. Looked like they were going to break the East hole for sure. The East came back and led by nine. It looked like the West had just about fizzled out. And a late spurt, 11 to 2, brought him into a tie. Magic Johnson, who has 19 assists in the ball game, breaking his own assist record from last year. This is a five minute overtime right, period. Robert. Uh, good matchups Don't coming up here for both teams on. to potentially Wait try and take advantage of. Robert Parrish, maybe against Jabbar. Jabbar against Parrish. And we got Dr. J guarding uh, Kiki Vandaway. And the Iceman being guarded by Andrew Tony. Here is Kiki Vandaway. Julius falls down. Vandaway is open. And Vandaway in and out. Parrish, the rebound. And the East can draw first blood in overtime. Isaiah Thomas. Yes. It goes and it counts. When you try and stop him, that's like trying to catch a water bug. He just skitters in front of you, and as he comes up to court, this is what you're looking at. Some head fake, some foot fake, some change of pace, and right into the pack, and does he know how to do it? Isaiah Thomas, 18 points, all in the second half. 14 assists, and a three-point lead for the East here. Keep in mind, on the fourth foul, you get the bonus. Each team allowed two timeouts. The West also will have a 20-second timeout. That's a lot of them. He did not use it in the four quarters. Steele, Harris, Thomas, Thomas. Didn't have control of it. And Sigma is fouled as he gets the rebound. Isaiah Thomas just didn't have control. And he could have probably laid it off to Andrew Tony that time, who might have had an easier chance to try and score, but he's trying to make it happen. Isaiah Thomas. George Gervin, a scoring machine in the backcourt, looking for Sigma. Bird is on Sigma. Here's Jack Sigma, tipped up and in by Kareem. And it's a one-point lead for the East with one minute gone by now in overtime. This is the third overtime in the history of the All-Star Games and the first one since the East won in 1980 in Landover, Maryland. Bird looking for help. Andrew Tony. Notice they have the good outside shooters in there now. They sure do. Julius. And there's one of them. Medium range jumper, and that's pretty decent range for Dr. J. 30 points for Julius Irving. George Gervin. One hander. An and an offensive oh. foul called against George Gervin. He used that left arm. Great defensive play by Andrew Tony to destroy the rhythm of, Doc, of uh, the Iceman. 137, 134 the East, 320 to go. 19 on the shot clock. Uh, here's where you have problems when you get down to the last couple of minutes of a key game like this where you don't have the coordination, the execution of set plays. So uh, there might be a lot of one-on-one -on -one like you're going to see maybe right here. Bird, baseline, blocked by Magic Johnson. But Julius is there, Irving. 32 for the doctor and a five-point lead for the east they're opening it up now Gervin got free inside magic johnson knowing where the open man was 20 assists for magic johnson today well we're going to need a computer to keep track of those three-point lead for the east tony andrew tony so the philadelphia 76ers are contributing heavily in this overtime effort. Julius Irving has four points. Isaiah Thomas three and Andrew Tony with a basket. 141-136. Gervin blocked by Tony. Two on one. Thomas and Tony. And a foul. Basket counts. They're going playing aggressive defense, this East team, making it pay off. A happy East bench. Andrew Tony before that play. Not doing what you'd call a Tony like. The last two, and now it's a 144 to 136 game. The East is leading by 225 to go. We're in overtime. And as we saw in regulation, anything can happen with a few minutes to go in an all-star game. Vandaway guarded by Irving and his head time. There's the West Bank. A little more solemn. Yes. Harris looking down court. He's got Tony. Here's Andrew. Andrew Tony. That was a super outlet pass by Robert Parrish and a great reception by Tony. 
He's got seven in overtime. And the West comes right back with George Gervin. But it's 146 to 138 and under two minutes to go, as you see. Most points in the history of the All-Star game. Two teams. You're seeing it right here. Julius Irving is two more. You turn a guy like Dr. J. Lewis in an All-Star game because there's really no team defense again. Double teams, win the double team. That turns him virtually loose one-on-one. -on -one. Ten point lead. Cut to eight is Kareem with 25 in the ball game. Makes it eight points now. 148 to 140, the highest scoring All-Star game in history. Today here in Denver. Well, where else should it happen but in Denver? The Nuggets, one of the high-powered offensive teams. That's they right. love high-powered scoring right. basketball here. Well, Casey Jones may be on his way to another All-Star victory. Maybe. Let's see what Frank Layton has to say about it when we come back. Think win. We still think win, okay? But we have to, we have to steal it. We got to do a great job to do it, all right? Going into a denial defense. One thing that Frank Layden said just before we came back, he said, I'd rather lose by two than by eight. Means that he wants to go out there and he's going to play tough defense. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see them deny, deny, deny. And it'll be up to the red jersey team to go out there and, and reverse cut and find men going to the hoop against this real strong defense. And to those fans who are tuning in who are saying, what is NBA basketball all about? Deny means, of course, that you get out in the passing lanes and uh, play aggressive defense. For the East, Andrew Toney and Julius Irving have scored 13 of their 16 points in overtime. The Philadelphia connection in this case, 111 to go, an eight-point lead. The West needs baskets, good defense, and breaks. There's one. And here comes Magic. Still enough time. Down by eight. Vandaway inside. Johnson. Magic Johnson on the follow-up. Under a minute to play. And a six-point lead for the East. Double team Bird. And a foul. Vandaway and Johnson all over Larry Bird and a foul. And that's not a bad move. Well, they're going to have to do it with good defense, the West. If a steal, if they could have made a steal, so much the better. But if not, go foul. The South of the uh, East will have to take the ball out of bounds. Second team foul or third team foul on the West. One more and they're in the penalty. In the overtime, we're in the overtime period with 45 seconds, 16 on the shot clock. Six point lead for the East. Knocked away into Bird's hand. Parrish inside, Thomas. Isaiah Thomas got it, a big basket for the East. Boy, and he put it up there among the lumber. 21 points in the second half. Johnson for three. A three-pointer for Magic Johnson. Coming right back, Parrish, the other end. And doesn't he run Kareem in the regular season, Parrish? Every single time he can, Dick. Magic for three. No, Bird. 20 seconds to go. And the East is going to win this one. Five in a row. Tony. Well, that's some great individual play. Isaiah Thomas, Dr. J. And, beer. and I'll tell you something, we have a million heroes in this game, and you're looking at one right now, Isaiah Thomas, who is a brilliant player. Isaiah Thomas is our most valuable player of this all-star game. The final score here in Denver, Colorado, the East, 154, the West, 145, and Isaiah Thomas of the Detroit Pistons, who scored 21 second half and overtime points and 15 assists, is our MVP. And well deserved. He created an awful lot of action for this team with his penetration and also hit some outstanding shots, uh, outside shots, to help keep the middle open for the big guys of the East. So uh, a very dejected Magic Johnson. Our thanks to Marty Aronoff, and thank you, Tom Heinsohn. This is Dick Stockton for Tom Heinsohn and Pat O'Brien saying so long from McNichols Arena. The final score, the East 154, the West 145. Don't forget to join us two weeks from today, 3.30 Eastern. One of sports' great rivalries continues as the Philadelphia 76ers battle the Boston Celtics. Coming up next, though, at CBS Sports Sunday, featuring the WBC super lightweight bout between Bruce Curry and Billy Costello.
coverage of the National Basketball Association has been a presentation of CBS Sports.